Welcome back to another video. Today we're back on foot fishing one of Florida's great migrations known as the mullet run. Each year in the fall, millions of these bait fish move from the Carolinas down the east coast of Florida to eventually head offshore and spawn. Florida's native predatory fish sit patiently waiting to gorge themselves on the mullet in preparation for the coming winter months. As a native South Floridian myself, I look forward to this incredible migration every single year, and I'm so excited to share some of the magic it has to offer with you all. Sit back and enjoy the video, and I'll see you out on the sand. So with these mullet coming down the beach, one of the major challenges is that they're moving really fast. So as you can see, I have my whole cart with me right here, my whole cart system, my rods, cast net, stuff like that. But the baits are moving super fast down the beach, so I'm trying to catch up to them. My buddy Kyler's with me today. He's actually running after school right now. So once I catch up to him, should be able to get some fish. I'm kind of getting out of breath here. This is a a good workout so once i get to kyler and the fish i'll catch up with you guys all right we just took a good trek down the beach we finally found a school of mullet i'm gonna use this rig right here to try to snag one and then we're gonna get to fishing all right finally got one to the beach all right, this is what we're using. It's a perfect silver mullet. Kind of snagged them in the gill, which isn't ideal, but it's about an eight inch bait. Perfect for the snook, tarpon, jacks, anything moving down the beach right now, this is what they're feeding on. There we go, Kyler's gonna throw this one on. See if you can get a big fish. Just put my first bait out right now. We're right on the edge of this school that's in the trough, so let's see what happens. Pretty exciting. First mullet run action for me of the year. Pelicans are working, but we're not finding much predators yet. Kyler and I both got baits free lined right now. We might switch to a bottom rig if anything, but got some weather rolling in. Beach is basically empty, which is nice. It's a Monday today, so kind of ideal. But we'll see what happens. Fingers crossed the fish show up. That's a healthy one. Look at the size of this bad boy, that's a hog leg. Thing's bigger than you, boy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, there you have it. I guess I got bit by a cuda. I didn't even feel it, but damn. All right, gonna get another bait out. These baits pushed up close to the beach. And we started fishing them. Well, I don't think we're going to stay here that much longer. We might make a move here in a minute. All right, Kyler just threw the net. I think he got a few. I'm going to get some water. I think we're going to take these baits somewhere else. We're not seeing a lot of fish on this beach. Yeah. That's good. All right, so we made a big change. We got off the beach. We were seeing a lot of bait, a lot of birds working, but unfortunately not a lot of big fish. I think it has to do with the tide. It's just a little bit too low for the, the big fish to get on them. So we came here to an inlet. We have some bait in the bucket. Kyler was cool enough to throw the net. 
got about eight or 10 baits. So we're gonna fish those for a little while, wait for the tide to rise and probably get back out on the beach in the afternoon and get some big fish. But we're gonna do this for now and see how it goes. All right, walking out here on the rocks, gotta be safe, gotta be careful. One wrong move and you could have a pretty bad fall. So got a silver mullet hanging right here. This is what we call it in the cast net. Gonna get it out here and look for a big fish. We ended up fishing the inlet for a couple of hours with very little action going on before we got caught in a storm. After the storm passed, the tide was a lot higher and I figured our best bet for catching a fish was gonna be out on the sand. So we hopped back in the Jeep and we headed to a different beach. All right, so we have been all over the beaches today. We went all the way to the inlet. Nothing happening over there. We got caught in some weather. We made another move, we're on another beach, and we finally just saw our first signs of life. There's a, a pot of mullet down here and they're getting blown up, hoping to God that it's tarpon. We put in too much work to just catch some jacks and some kudas. So, Kyle is right here. We're actually getting excited. We've been out here for like, I don't know, six, seven hours today. We're really putting in the work, so fingers crossed this is a good one. All right, we're really getting close. We're really approaching the school now. Probably been walking for like 10 minutes. Oh my God, I'm super excited. I have not got on a mullet run. Caught a bait coming down the beach in quite some time, so let's see. This is a nice school here. I think it's about the size of a football field. Kyler scoffed at me when I said that, but as we get closer, it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna try to pull out the big camera and show you guys what this looks like. <laughs> All right, here we go. Just got up on the bait pod right now. Hope you guys can hear me. There's a lot of wind out here. Wind's starting to pick up. Man, it's looking like it's gonna be a good afternoon. I wanna get some of these explosions on top for you guys so you can see what it's like, but I also just wanna get to fishing. So the pod's right here in front of us. I right, just snagged myself a nice silver mullet right here. Show you guys what this thing looks like. Got the van stall. I'm gonna get this bait out. <laughs> Going off. <laughs> Oh, the tricky part is trying to get your bait to stand out in this. This is nuts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right under me. That might not be tarpon. I think that's something else. What, what else would it be? Snook? Now it's supposed to be oil like that. If we put a bait on Bonham, we'd find out. Let's go! <laughs> Finally. I don't know. It's coming at me. <sighs> what happened? I lost it? I saw it. What is it? Oh, it's a nice snook. Oh, oh let's go. Whew. Just got a nice snook. Got this like garbage bag that's right here. Oh, that was a sick jump. Oh, let's go. Finally got bit. Oh, oh my God, look at this fish. Still got him in the surf here. I think he's a little over slot. Oh, come on, baby. I'm just gonna try to surf him in with the wave. He's still fighting. Still pretty green. Here's a wave. Whew. Got him. Oh, he might be slot actually. Oh, just got this super nice snook. Really healthy fish. Might be slot. If he is, I'm gonna take him home. I haven't killed a snook yet this year and it's already October. Really nice fish. You see the lateral line, just like all snook have. We just threw it on the tape, it's 31 inches, so this one's going home. Snook have to be between 28 and 32 inches. It's a, it's a slot size here in Florida, so 
This one makes a slot, it's gonna make a great dinner. One more look at this fish, really nice one. I just bled him out, 31 inches. Gonna make a nice recipe out of this one. I don't really kill a lot of snook, maybe one or two per season. I like to be a conservationist. I really care about the population, so one or two is good for me. I get to eat my snook for the season, and then the rest I always let go. It's a really special fish right here. All right, so swish it up here. We're walking in the in the sand. We've been chasing these baits for probably, I don't know, a mile or two now. They're moving pretty quick. They're still tarping on them. I got that slot snook, so now I'm switching up to a swim bait. I'm gonna see if I can get to the edge and try to get a tarpon. I am literally out of breath. My cardio is not what it used to be. That was a shark. I got a freaking giant on. I got to back up on the drag a little bit. <laughs> oh, this fish does not even know it's hooked. This is a monster tarpon. He's going to jump. Oh, come on. His head shaking. Oh, man. This fish cannot even know it's hooked. It has not taken off yet. <sighs> this is definitely, I think, a triple digit tarpon. And it feels super heavy <laughs> let's go how is this fish not taking off oh. Oh. Whew, i'm not mad about it though not gonna not gonna lie he's staying close i feel like he doesn't even know he's hooked he's only jumped one time Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He's not ready, there's no way. That's a big fish. I know, he didn't even fight. Oh, look at this fish. He's waking up now. Oh. Come on, jump, baby. Jump. <laughs> He's not. Oh. That's a big <laughs> oh my god. Alright. Working him in. He just took an epic, epic, sick jump. That fish just. He could only get about a quarter of the way out of the water with how big he is. What'd you say, Kai? I think it's gonna be a minute. Alright. Keeping this fish in close. Doing my best to keep as much pressure on him as possible. I don't want to fight him all night long and get him completely tired. I'm not going to keep this fish. Obviously, you can't eat tarpon, so I just want to have a nice, fun fight, quick fight, and let him swim off strong. How big do you think he is? 70? 80? I thought he was 100. I don't know about 100. He looked big. I haven't seen a big tarpon in a little while, but when he ate, that initial, like, Half jump to look like he was 100. But yeah, I could be overdoing it. He could be closer to 80. Oh. I think he's hooked well, so I'm kind of, I'm just applying more pressure now. I don't understand how he's that Still fighting this fish. Probably going on about, going on about 10 minutes now, if I had to guess, five to 10 minutes. Staying pretty close to the beach, which I like. I don't want to get spooled. As soon as I said he's staying close to the beach, he took off. This 
fish is really starting to fight hard now. I, I thought it was weird that he was not fighting super well at first, but sometimes it just takes him a little while to wake up like this. this guy's getting far now. Really applying a lot of pressure to this fish. Come on, fish. Turn around. I think I just turned him. <sighs> I'm just backing up on the beach, trying to gain as much line back as I can. <sighs> All right, probably going on about 15 minutes now in the fight, I'd say. Fish took a really long run, as you guys saw, and now I'm finally starting to work him back in. I'd say he's probably about 50 yards away, if I had to guess. But he took a nice long run after he stayed really close to the shore for a while. He was in the trough. Okay, fish is close again. All right, getting this fish close. Kyler's gonna try to put his hands on him for me. Get the lure out of his mouth and make sure it swims off strong. God, you gotta love tarpon. Two targeted species for today were snook and tarpon. We got the snook and now we're on the tarpon. Couldn't ask for a better day. It's Really, really gorgeous out. Perfect conditions. Kyler's mad because he's not fishing right now. So he's throwing things at me as I fight a giant tarpon. Where's the bait at? Over yonder? I'm watching tarpon jump out of the water. This fish has no quit in him. Come on, dude. I'm going to let you go. Come on, man. <laughs> He just porpoised. That was so sick. I'm trying to pull back across his back. And that way it tires him out a little bit more. You always want to pull against the fish. Just like that. Okay, here he comes. Third time's a charm. All right, here it is. This big tarpon, look at this bucket mouth. Oh my God. We're gonna take really good care of this fish, make sure it swims off strong. This fish is huge. There it is, big fish, probably a hundred pounds. <laughs> Super nice fish, gonna make sure it swims off really healthy. It's been in the water the whole time. I lifted it for maybe, I don't know, five seconds. Sculping air, so. Should be good, beautiful fish. Just walking with the fish, moving it in the current. There she goes. All right, so I'm not sure what part of that audio would be clear What's not going to be clear, I was recording with the GoPro and it went completely underwater when I was trying to release that fish. But anyway, I just wanted to say that was an epic fish. Super big. I don't want to say how big for sure, but if I had to say, I'd say over 100 pounds. Released her, she swam off strong. She didn't fight too long, maybe 15 minutes, so it was a nice quick fight. Really epic fish. I don't know what else to say, except we're going to get back out there and try to get another one before the sun gets down. Let's get ready to clean this beautiful slot snook. Okay, just like any fish, I'm gonna start by inserting my knife behind the gill plate up near the head, cutting into the head meat, and then turning the knife and starting to cut back towards me, following the spine and making little tiny slices, starting to separate that meat from the spine of the fish. So I'm gonna do that all the way down till I get to the tail. like so. Gotta be careful. Snook have pretty big scales, so every once in a while you want to make sure you wipe them off. Get your knife blade clean. So now that we have the initial outline of the top of the fish, I can start to lift the fillet with my other hand, continuing to separate the meat of the fillet from the rest of the carcass as I go. So as you can see, I'm going really slow and taking my time 
making really precise cuts. I just want to make sure I can get every possible ounce of edible meat off of this fish, not to waste any of it. Snook, like most fish, have a raised backbone. So you can see right here, I'm actually pointing the blade of my knife down on the other side of the raised backbone. That way I can salvage as much of the meat as I possibly can. Now we're basically done. I'm just finishing up by separating the tail first. I've cleaned a lot of fish, but still I really like to take my time and make little tiny slices so I don't miss any meat. And I still do miss meat sometimes. It happens. So here I spin the fish around just to give myself a better view and some better leverage. And I run the knife from the original cut near the head all the way down to the anal fin. And at this point we should be mostly separated. Here I'm just making the finishing touches and going over the intestine area where the guts are and the stomach and the rib cage. None of that's edible so I do my best to try to keep all of that off of the clean fillet. One last spin here and at this point it should just be holding on by a thread which it is. I make my final little cut and the fillet is off of the fish. Right here I'm just going to be cutting out any remaining rib bones. Now it's time to remove the skin. It's actually a pretty simple process if you've never done it before. All you do is get your knife flush between the skin and the meat and then you kind of do a sawing motion down the entire fillet of the fish and you trail with your backhand just separating the fillet from the skin. It's easier than it looks. A lot of fish you can eat with the skin on, but funny enough with snook you can't. It supposedly tastes like soap. I've never tried it myself, but I'm going to go ahead and take their word for it. Last step is to remove the pin bones, and with a snook, they run about a third of the way up the fillet, right in the center, just like most fish. There it is, perfect snook fillet, and now we're ready to take this thing into the kitchen and whip up a nice meal. Alrighty, welcome back to the kitchen. We're gonna cook up that snook here in a couple minutes, but I got my sister Maddie with me again. She was in a video a few weeks ago and uh, we did a catch clean and cook with some yellow jacks. But today we're doing the snook and she's actually gonna be doing the majority of the cooking. I'm gonna handle the fish, but she's gonna make her specialty pasta. It's her signature dish and it's absolutely amazing. So I'm gonna grab the camera from her and she's gonna do the cooking. I don't know where to begin. I really don't. <laughs> no. Hey there guys. I'm Maddie, <laughs> Tyler's sister. I'm not the one that's usually on camera. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna make, Tyler called it my famous pasta dish, but it's really not that big of a deal, I promise you, you can do it too. It's just a simple pesto bow tie pasta dish. Usually I make it with some grilled chicken or pan seared chicken and we put some sun dried tomatoes. It's delicious. So I went to Publix today. Didn't, I don't typically go to Publix, but we work with what we can get at Publix. I'm gonna go ahead and put the ingredients into this, which is what we're gonna blend with. Now, you might hear people tell you that you need to have a fancy food processor in order to make sauces. You don't. You can have a simple blender, or you can have a Nutribullet, or you can have, I'm sure, a million other devices. But you just need to get a nice blend going. So I'm gonna throw in the garlic. I have already chopped it. If you put whole cloves in it, you're probably gonna have some chunkiness in your sauce, which is perfectly fine if that's the way you like it. I'm gonna put this basil. I'll just give it a nice, a nice tear. Who needs to chop when you got hands? We can just tear it up. Perfect. And I'm going to put a little bit of the greens, like I said, I like, like a nice flower packed green pesto. Healthy stuff, because we don't have too many greens going on. Again, just give it a tear and toss it in. Now here's the part, let me show you guys about the olive oil. Here's the part that's complicated, you guys. You guys. We need to put the olive oil into the cup with the rest of the ingredients. The thing about the olive oil is I wing it. So come up a little bit closer here. Let's show them. Pour it in, this takes expert skill because you have no idea how much you're gonna need and it's really about intuition. I'm feeling that's right. I'm feeling that's good. Take a look. That feels right. 
Just a little dash of lemon and we're ready to blend. <laughs> All right, lemon. Now, there's sometimes seeds in the lemon. You don't want those in there. Just let that go. My hands are pre-washed. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just squeeze some lemon. Led Zeppelin's got a good song for that. Okay, we're ready. We're ready to blend. Where's my top? Where's the top? Where's the top? It's inside of the nurture bullet or magic bullet, this? whatever it's called. Yeah. It's, oh, it's, this is the top. Yeah. Perfect. That's the top. Mm -hmm. That on there. All right, it's ready. Make sure it's tight. And then go ahead and just pop that in. And ready? All right. Just check it out. Oh, yeah, that looks good. This is a lot greener than it normally is. But every time I'll tell you with this dish, every time it's different. And that's what makes it so fun. Oh, <laughs> I forgot the pine nuts. <laughs> if you're like me, you will sometimes forget things as you are making your pesto. But the good thing about this is that it's very forgivable. All you have to do is just open the pine nuts now. You don't even need to measure them. That's why this bag is perfect. So it comes out to the perfect amount. You just can pour the whole bag in there. Yes, and that gives it that nice crunch. Also, sometimes if we're feeling crazy, I do like to add in some other nuts, like these raw, ro not raw, these roasted sea salt cashews. Is that okay, Dad? Just throwing a few in. It honestly, hmm. It adds a nice flavor. Pop that back on. Just go back in with it. I think honestly I put the perfect amount of olive oil. I don't know how I got that. Call it the female intuition. Perfect. Perfect. Let's try it. It's perfect. That's it for that. Now we're just gonna throw in the pasta and then we'll be good. It doesn't necessarily look like a lot, but it really covers the pasta well. Now in the meantime, while we're waiting for the water to boil, we're gonna get that fish going, and then I'll make a nice little salad. Thanks for tuning in. All right, so the pasta's finishing up. I'm gonna get started on the snook fillets. They're not gonna take long, and we want everything to time perfectly. That way the fish is nice and hot when it hits the plate. We're gonna do five pieces, and there's only three of us, but everyone's really hungry, so I'm excited. This is a really, really special fish snook. Um, they live in different parts of the world, but they're mostly common here in Florida. I know they get them in the Caribbean, Mexico, but I grew up catching this fish and I have so much admiration for them. It's one of my favorite fish for sure. The cool thing is they have to be a slot size, which means you can't keep them if they're under 28 inches or over 32 inches. So they have to be right in that sweet spot. This one happened to be 31 inches, so it worked out perfectly. And like I mentioned earlier in the video, I really only kill like one fish per season because I'm kind of a conservationist. I like the population to do well and that way we can catch these for generations to come. So we're going to cook this up blackened style, which is one of my favorite ways to make it. All right, so this is my go-to blackening seasoning. It's Chef Paul Proudhon's Blackened Redfish Magic. I picked this up at Publix. I use it all the time. It's super good and I don't have to create my own blackening seasoning. Very convenient. So we're just going to get a nice healthy amount on the skin side of these fish. And you know it's the skin side because you see the bloodline. So that's actually the skin side right there. All right, so right over here, I got two pans going. I think this is too much fish for one pan. I have on medium high heat because with blackening a fish, you wanna make sure you get a really good sear, especially on the first side. So pans are nice and hot. I'm going in with some avocado oil. I like the avocado oil because it has, <clears throat> it's really good for high heat, all purpose cooking. So gonna do some of that, and then we're gonna add a little bit of butter for flavor and the fish. So it's a real, real simple way to cook fish. And I'm gonna show you guys a cool trick that you can use so that way you don't overcook your fish. That's the number one mistake people make. All right, so the oil's super hot in the pan. We're adding the butter now. You always wanna go oil first, then butter. If not, the butter will burn. And that won't be good. 
I'm gonna place the fish down and just give it a little bit of a shake so it doesn't stick. I'm going with the thick pieces first. They're gonna cook a little bit longer, so. All right, we're gonna let those cook about three quarters of the way through on the first side. Get a nice searing, it'll be nice and crispy. And we'll flip them over and let them finish off. Okay, so I've already strained the pasta. I'm just gonna pour in the pesto sauce. Don't wanna leave any of that goodness out. Yummy. Mix, 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 mix. And we're gonna just throw in some chopped up sun-dried tomatoes. You can make them as small as you want, but the sun-dried tomatoes really make this pasta dish delicious. All right, so the fish has been cooking for probably three minutes. It cooks pretty quick, especially on a high heat. So I wanted to point out here, so you could see like, when the fish cooks, obviously it turns white. As it starts to move up the filet, that's how you know it's getting ready to flip. So when it's about three quarters of the way cooked through, you know you're good to flip it. So I'm gonna blacken the other side as well, go a little bit lighter on this side. Got a nice sear just like that, that's what we're looking for. So we're gonna cover the fish up, and what that's gonna do is that's gonna trap the heat in here and allow the fish to cook all the way through. And it also adds a little bit of moisture as well so they don't dry out. Okay, I forgot to mention, after I covered the fish, I need to lower the heat a little bit as to not burn the fish on the other side. And then I'm gonna squeeze some lemon in here and add a little bit more butter for flavor just to top it off and then these will be ready to go. All right, and we're just gonna put some pasta. Oh, what the, look, it's a whole cashew. Sometimes you get a little surprised when you don't blend properly. But it's gonna be good. Yum. Thank you guys so much for being here and watching this video. Um, I know I've been this a little goofball, but I'm just here to support my brother and provide delicious recipes because I'm a chef. Okay, ready to go. But for real, thank you. Okay, so we're completely done. The food's ready to go. I'm gonna put it on the table. Here's a look at the final presentation. We got the snook here, black and snook. The pesto pasta that Maddie made, a couple slices of lemon. This is going to be absolutely delicious. I can't wait to dig in, put it on the table, and see what the family thinks. Everyone's at the dinner table. Maddie, you want to say grace real quick? Yes, I would love to. Oh, hold your hand here. <laughs> All right. Thank you, God, for this meal. Thank you to the plants, the animals and the people that contributed to our meal tonight. May we be nourished and blessed. May we bless all of those that have touched this meal and all of those who need food tonight. May they have food and be nourished. We are grateful. Amen. Amen. Okay, so let's see what my dad and my sister think so that way I can eat because I'm starving. I've, I was actually on the boat all day today fishing. It's the mullet run right now, so I'm out there fishing as much as I possibly can. Well, the pasta's good. Mm. You don't say so yourself. Mm -hmm. Fish is perfect. Yeah, it's good. It tastes very fresh. Really good, loving mm. it. Thank you for catching this for us. The best way to eat your fish, you guys, is to get a local fisherman catching it for you. It is the best way to be in harmony with Mother Earth and the ocean. <laughs> Any words, Dad? Delicious, flaky and cooked to perfection. Awesome, okay. Mm. Mm. I'm gonna eat mine. Mm. And uh, yeah, we'll catch How up with you right after. Pasta, though? Very good. All right, so we just wrapped up dinner. I was telling my family, that's one of the best meals I've had in a really long time. It was so delicious. Maddie makes that pasta all the time and every single time it seems to be better than the last. And the snook was super great too. I think it's been six or eight months since, since I've had snook. So that was a great special little treat. 
But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is the first time that we fished the mullet run on the channel and the first time that we fished it this year. But it should be good fishing for the next three or four weeks or so. So look forward to a lot more videos coming out about the mullet run. Uh, I plan on doing some more tarpon fishing, maybe some nighttime stuff. We'll see what happens. But if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up. Any comments, questions, concerns, leave them down below. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Subscribe. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs>